hello guys this is everything medical and today we are looking at one of my friends step one experience who scored 264 in USMLE step one in this video we're going to talk about the timeline of his preparation the different phases involved in the preparation the total time taken by him the materials used in each phase and how he used the NBME assessments to his advantage and we will devise a study plan based on his experience so before we start, please subscribe to our channel. It will help us a lot. So first, let's look at the preparation timeline of my friend. It is divided into three phases. Phase one is all about refreshing the basics using materials like Kaplan, Pathoma, Boards and Beyond, Sketchy, Shelf Notes, etc. based on your weaknesses. Phase two is the UFAP phase as it's commonly known among the uh, American grads. It is the most important phase of step one prep. It is the real deal. In this phase, you use the first aid book and then you use the question bank called you world again and again. Last phase, the phase three, it's the end game where you revise the first aid and all the notes you made. Then you use the NBMEs to assess yourself and we're going to look at how my, my friend used the NBMS to his advantage. We'll discuss his secret. And then comes the exam day. This is his timeline, but keep in mind that he was doing a job together with his step one. So if you are doing a completely dedicated preparation, you'll require significantly less time. Now we're going to look at the three phases separately. Phase one, refreshing the basics. In this phase, you use resources like Kaplan lecture notes. There are separate lecture notes for each subject. Many of my juniors asked me if they should do Kaplan or not. Here's my recommendation. Do Kaplan only if your basics are poor. Otherwise, you can totally skip it. For example, I had very weak basics when I started my USMLE journey. That is why I needed to refresh all the subjects before diving into the advanced phase of my preparation. So unless you're the topper of your class, I strongly urge you not to skip this Kaplan material. Next resource material is Pathoma, and I'm not talking about the Pathoma book. I'm also talking about the Pathoma lectures. Trust me guys, this material is pure gold. USMLE Step 1 preparation is not complete unless you go over this resource. I'm a big fan of Dr. Sattar's teaching and that's why I would recommend you to listen to his lectures. This resource for pathology is super cheap and it is worth every penny. For pharma and micro, I would highly suggest using sketchy videos at least twice because these two subjects require a lot of cramming and sketchy perfectly helps you in memorizing those drug names microorganisms etc so i would highly recommend you to consider using sketchy website if your pharma and micro are weak like mine recently there has been an increase in the use of boards and beyond dr ryan is the lecturer who has simplified everything with his videos so if you're not satisfied with Kaplan I would suggest to check his sample videos maybe his teaching style is your cup of tea one thing that I want you to remember in case of phase one is that less is more what I mean by that is you should try to minimize the number of materials used in step uh, used in phase one because with increased number of study materials, you start to get confused with the concepts. And the question that the juniors ask me is about the total time required for phase one. And I tell them that the time required depends on your foundation in medical school. So for example, if you were a position holder in your med school days, it is gonna take significantly lesser time for you to refresh your basics. And another thing I want to mention here is that phase one is a time hole. I see lots of my friends started preparing for step one, but they got stuck in this phase. They kept doing Kaplan's over and over again to solidify their concepts. That is why they ended up spending more than a year just on phase one. And ultimately they got exhausted from all this and quit their step one preparation. 
so my advice is to finish with phase one and move to phase two as quickly as possible and make sure you don't spend all your time and energy on phase one phase one is about clearing any doubts regarding the commonly tested topics it is not about how much stuff you know but how well you know the stuff if you're having difficulty getting one a particular concept you can surely use an extra resource like youtube google wikipedia etc next is phase two it is called the ufab phase by the american grads u for u world fa for first aid and p for pathoma it is the most important phase of your preparation your hard work and dedication during this phase is going to determine how much you score uh, in the step one ultimately so start this phase by reading the USMLE first aid for step one book. Link is in the description box. I suggest you to take this book seriously because this book is the Bible to step one. And my friend jokingly says that before the exam, you must have memorized even the page numbers of first aid if you want to get a good score. So once you're done with a thorough read of first aid, buy a UL description and start doing UL questions system wise in tutor mode before starting each system on UL read that system from first aid and complement your first aid with pathoma again guys this phase is super important and you need to have dedicated time set aside for this also i advise you to start making your own notes from UL in the form of post-its and paste them on first aid so that when you read your first aid, you will automatically go through your notes as well. Do not hurry in this phase, guys. I always recommend my juniors to not worry about the number of your questions uh, you do every day. So take it slow and steady. Remember, time does not matter. Few years down the road, nobody will ask you how much time you took for preparation, but they'll certainly ask your step one score. So again, number of questions you do every day do not matter. The quality of your study does. Another thing is that you should not worry about the percentage of questions you're doing right in the U world. It is not important because you're still in the learning phase. Once you're done with this routine of U world and first aid, I highly recommend you to start uh, doing U world in random mode. It will help your mind to switch across different systems. After you're done with UL two times, I suggest you do your in in incorrect questions. Make sure you grasp the weaknesses by doing the wrong question. Ask yourself why you got this question wrong in the first place. If you're having any trouble with any concept, use Google, YouTube, Wikipedia, etc. to grasp it. This brings us to our last phase, phase three, the end game. In this phase, you need to revise the first aid and the notes that you made in phase two. Take the online NBME assessment exam every week. It will help you in identifying your weak areas. Here's the secret of my friend who got a 264 on step one. He used NBME as a new question bank. Really guys, I suggest you to do the same because the questions in NBME exams are made by the people who compile step one and it is a very valuable resource for questions. After you're done with each NBME, use Google to find the explanation for the tricky questions. It will work wonders for your score. Keep doing one NBME every week until you start getting your desired scores. The NBME report will show you your weak areas. I advise you to work on them with first aid and use extra resources if you have to. Now we are going to talk about the last week before your exam. My friend took the UL self-assessments in the last week and I would advise you to do the same. The UL self-assessments, UWSAs, slightly over predict the scores and I think it will provide you with the confidence you need to ace this exam. In the last week, revise your first aid and notes. Take the free 120 questions on the USMLE website. Revise high yield topics and volatile stuff like storage diseases, structural changes in myocardium after an MI, etc. On exam day, 
the key is to take a good sleep the night before and keep control of your nerves. You have worked hard for this and you've got this. Wear clothes with minimum pockets because before and after your break, the guys at the exam center will give you some frisking. And if you have too many pockets, it will waste a lot of your break time. Also, do not try something new before the exam. For example, do not try taking sleeping pills the night before your exam if you do, do not have much experience with them. They might make you feel dizzy on the exam day. Use coffee or energy drinks only towards the end of your exam. If you take them during the early blocks, it will make you go to washroom multiple times and you don't want to face that. Congrats, you know you're done with the most difficult exam ever. Keep in mind there are different paths to success, right? What worked for my friend might not work for you. Take as much time as you want for preparation. You should not compromise on your scores for anything. A written experience of my friend Hassan is in the description box. So check the written experience out as well. Links to all the resources and important materials are also in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. We also provide tutoring for beginners. So if you are interested, email me. Email is in the description. Like, share and subscribe for more videos like this. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.